Small business is about courage, risk-taking, independence, and we small business owners are survivors. Everybody has an idea for a business, but how do you take that idea from mind to market? This is the place to learn. Small Business School with Hattie Bryant. It's a new kind of school. Together we'll learn about business from the inside out, from the people who've done it. We'll meet the men and women who are today's pioneers and quiet heroes. Their lives are the textbooks. Our classroom is the world. Hi, and welcome to Small Business School Goes to Main Street. We have presented several programs over the years from rejuvenated historic business districts. Since 1980, the National Trust for Historic Preservation's Main Street programs have generated billions of dollars in physical improvements, thousands of net new businesses, and hundreds of thousands of net new jobs. Much of the work being done to revitalize these historic business districts is being done by small business owners. Today, you'll meet Carol and Dean Schroeder, who, before it was popular, bought an historic building on Monroe Street in Madison, Wisconsin. Every week on Small Business School, we take you into our master class. This is not a class like you take in school. It's a real-life classroom where the teachers are small business owners who will describe how they have built what you see now. Step into our master class with Carol and Dean Schroeder. Retailers come and go, but this specialty shop came and stayed. It's Orange Tree Imports, where shoppers can always find the unusual gift, from greeting cards, to crystal, to Christmas ornaments, to kitchenware. The store is named after one of its owners, Carol Schroeder, better known as Orange. She and her husband Dean started Orange Tree Imports just out of college, and they've never done anything but operate this sweet spot. It was always my dream of having my own store, and it just came true a little faster than I expected. And now, wait a minute, where'd you get the money to just buy this business? How old were you? Oh, I wasn't very old. I was about 21, 22 years old, and uh, we had some money saved up, and we were also able to, to buy some, borrow some, rather, from the bank. You were 21 and you had money saved? <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually, uh, my parents had saved money to help put me through college, and I skipped a year. So they were very kind and let me use some of the money that was saved. Now I get it. You <laughs> compressed your college education and had money. That's great. So you started your business with your leftover college money. Actually, what we did was we pledged that money as collateral and borrowed money against it so that when we needed money later and were done using it as collateral, we had a little bit more cash. Oh, well, that was smart. Orange and Dean started with furniture imported from Scandinavia, but through the years, they've listened to customers, watched trends, and formed a deep understanding of the marketplace they serve. When we took over the store after six months of running it, we decided to get rid of the furniture, and the furniture was heavy and very difficult to deal with, and we'd have to carry it up by hand from the basement. So we got rid of the furniture. We only had gift and uh, Scandinavian accessory items and a little bit of kitchenware. Today's product mix is based upon a philosophy Orange wrote about in her book, Specialty Shop Retailing. You cannot be all things to all people. The ability to find out what customers want and get it for them quickly is one of the strengths that sets a good specialty shop apart from its mass market competitors. I had a lot of people coming to me for advice and uh, I wanted to kind of consolidate that advice in, in one format and now when they come and ask me for advice I ask them if they could read the book first and then ask questions on what they hadn't learned from the book. Always the merchant. <laughs> Buy my book. <laughs> How do you get people to come into the store? It helps if you have a location that has lots of walk-by traffic or drive-by traffic so people notice where you are if there are other businesses around you. But after that point you have to really reach out to people that you feel are your target audience. There are a lot of unique things here. It's fascinating. Uh, you could spend a lot of time. It's, you could spend a whole day here. It's incredible. You know, you want to go to every little shelf and take something of everything home with you. It's really nice. So you already have several items in your basket. Yes. We're what planning on going to the kitchen cost? section next. Do you have a credit card? Yes, luckily. <laughs> The more you know about who your target market is, the better. If you're marketing to teenage kids who listen to the radio, then you need to be on the radio. If you are um, selling furniture to an upscale market, you might want to be in a slick city magazine. You also would want to probably do some direct mail to that targeted market. For instance, we once rented a mailing list from Bon Appetit to reach people who 
um, are interested in gourmet cooking. The way it works when you rent a mailing list is you're given permission to use it once for a specific use and that's why it's called renting rather than buying. You can also sometimes work out an arrangement with a nonprofit group where they might let you use their mailing list in exchange for a donation to that group. Orange writes in her book, a mailing list of your customers is essential and can be one of your store's most valuable assets if you use it often. We're part of a catalog group called the William Glenn Catalog out of Sacramento, California, and they put together the catalog with products that we vote on as a group. Um, the other stores in the group get together at the San Francisco Gourmet Show, and they decide what products they would like to feature that year. The uh, catalog group then arranges for co-op, which means that they get a discount on most of the products in the catalog in exchange for advertising them, and that helps pay for the catalog. And so how often do you mail your catalog to your list? We have a fall catalog that we send out, usually end of uh, October, early November, and then we do a spring catalog that we've just done the past few years. And in the fall catalog, we're allowed to personalize it with a uh, photograph on the inside front cover. We put a picture of our family in that um, spot, and I have to say that that is generally the one feature that everyone mentions when they get the catalog. They look at it and say, gee, the kids have grown. How do you stay special? How do you make yourself different from the big stores? Well, we watch for lines that are being discounted, and we try not to carry the ones that we know are really prevalent in the discount or big box stores. But also the fact that we present it the way we do. We select things. Um, Stanley Marcus once said that a specialty shop pre-selects things for their customers. They choose the very best of each item so that when the customer comes in, they know that there's something really unique about the products that are being offered. And also we offer them in a pleasant environment. We gift wrap them. We uh, help people select them. And that doesn't happen in a discount store. I love traveling to gift shows. We're doing New York, San Francisco, and um, Chicago this summer. I also meet with sales reps all the time and review product and I'll look at almost anything but I have a clear focus about what I think my store can sell, what my customers will want and will pay for with their money and that's how you know if a product is successful or not. It's a mistake just to buy what you want because uh, what you like may not be what your customers are asking you for. There's so much merchandise out there and you really have to discipline yourself not to just buy what you like, but to think about what your customers have told you they like. They vote with their dollars. What fun it was for me to find on these shelves products from two companies we've studied here at Small Business School. Jill Smith's Buckeye Bean and Herbs Shaped Pastas and Other Goodies Occupy Space in Orange's Specialty Food Section. Judy Jacobson's Madison Park greeting cards have a place in a wide selection of cards you can find only at Orange Tree. This is our whole catalog area, so a catalog Both tray Jill set. and Judy manufacture in the state of Washington, and here we are in Wisconsin. This is great. How long have you been shopping at Orange Tree? Since the beginning, since she opened 22 years ago. Wow. Tell me why you come here. It's just a fun place to be. You can come here and look, and then you can go back a week later and find different things. The absolute key to specialty retailing? Hard to find, unusual products. Surprise the shopper, and the shopper will come back. Orange Tree Imports does about 1.5 million in sales and employs 30 people, <laughs> some full-time, some part-time. Well, I think that when you hire your first employee, it's really trusting your baby with somebody. It's like having your first babysitter. You want someone who's going to have your vision and, and your way of dealing with customers and your love for the merchandise. But it's also liberating. It's like that first night out after the baby was born. You get to leave the store for a little bit, and uh, I think it's a great relief to know that there are other people that you can trust with your vision and, and who will not only carry out things the way you want to do it, but do it ten times better. What we're looking for is not so much a degree in business, which would be a bit hypocritical since we don't have degrees in business ourselves, but um, some retail experience and experience working with the public. And mostly we're looking for an attitude. You and Dean own the store, but do you make all the decisions? By no means, and I wouldn't want it that way. We do have the ultimate veto, and uh, we ask our employees for input on all major decisions. So early on, we started using something called participative democracy. It is a democracy to some extent, somewhat of a benevolent uh, dictatorship also, but <laughs> somewhat of a democracy. But also the key word is participative. I want my employees to really feel that this is their store and to convey that uh, through their work. Mm -hmm. We do vote on who's hired. Everybody uh, on the staff is invited to come to a staff interview. It really has been a wonderful system because it gets um, everyone's energies united towards a common goal. And I think that, that meaningful work is so important today. They can get a paycheck anywhere, and they can possibly get a bigger paycheck somewhere else. 
but if they feel good about coming to work and if they feel good about their teammates that they're working with, then I think it makes a real difference in retaining people. Susan, how long have you been here? I've been here 19 years, come to um, October. I was hired as Christmas help and they just can't get rid of me. <laughs> Now, why are you still here? Because the people are so nice to work with, and Carol and Dean have been very good to me over the years. Well, one of the things that we do as part of our participative democracy is we have staff meetings. We not only do um, staff meetings for hiring, we do staff meetings about three or four times a year just to talk about general issues. We have training seminars for our employees so that they're educated, and we also have what we call um, window meetings. We just had one last week where we get together and say, okay, here's a calendar for the next two months. We have a main window and we have three smaller windows. What's going to be in those windows? And we brainstorm about what holidays are coming up, what products are coming in, and then people volunteer to do those windows on their own time, taking the concepts that we've come up with in the meeting. And uh, that's They do it on their exciting. own time? Well, they we do pay it. them. But, well, okay. Yeah. They do it while they're here, but they squeeze it into their regular exactly. work. And in fact, that's how all the restocking is done also. We have assigned counter shifts when you have to be there behind the cash register to work with customers. But all the rest of the scheduling people do on their own. I've never heard of letting people do it that way. So I can save my stock time and come when the store is closed and do that? Exactly. Or you could come in at 8 o'clock in the morning and do your restocking before we open at 10. And uh, that tends to be a, a very good way of doing it because people take care of their own responsibility on their own time. That's, doesn't that sound different? I mean, I don't, I've never heard of that before. Well, it could well be. I, I think that uh, it's the wave of the future. I think that in order to keep good employees, especially in retail, we're going to have to be more creative. And even with the assigned counter shifts, which tend to be four-hour shifts so that people can do half a day or a whole day, we encourage people to um, take sub-shifts for each other and trade around. And we offer a bonus. If you have subbed for someone else um, ten times, you get a voucher each time, and then you get a reward after those ten vouchers are turned in. So what I think you're teaching me is a lot of nurturing creates this wonderful culture. Probably the most important thing we can do, and which we never do enough of, is complimenting our staff, thanking them, making them sure that they feel that they're doing a good job. And that's very hard. It's hard for us as entrepreneurs. As someone once said, you know, who, who does that for you? Who gives you the pat on the back that helps you pass it on to somebody else? So. Uh, it's hard to do and it's hard to remind yourself when you've got a lot of tasks to do that you really should spend a little bit of time with your staff and make sure that they feel good about what they're doing. Frequently the employees get together and learn about new products so they can help customers make the best buying decisions. Each one of these is individually hand balanced at the factory. That's how it can spin so fast and be totally stable on the counter. Would anybody like to come up and try this? It helps if you're going to demonstrate it for a customer. Yeah. And who wants to win this? No, no, no. Is anybody here? Yeah, why don't you hold it? Okay. Oh, now we know we're doing it fairly. Okay. And today's lucky winner is Karen. Congratulations. Thank you. Have you tried the raspberry fudge sauce? Um, this one I haven't tried, but we do try to, uh, to open up everything at some point so that we can, we can taste it and that way we can recommend it to customers if they come in and ask what's a good salsa, um, we can tell them how hot it is, how sweet it is. So I guess in 20 plus years you've had a lot of marriages, divorces, babies born, all that um, among the staff. That's really, we have had 120 employees over those 21 years and we're still in touch with almost all of them. We have staff reunions about every five years. We have uh, a whole family tree of employees who've worked here over the years and have either graduated from the university and moved on or gone on to other jobs. Orange, you're, you are what I would call an unconventional person. Now, I think you probably do some things in unusual ways. What would some of those things be? Well, one of the things, for instance, is that we don't have an office. Neither Dean nor I has a desk. And uh, we try and be in contact with our customers so we have a little table that we work at out in the customer assistance area. It's a compromise, but it means that we're available to customers that want to ask us questions. Why did you buy an old building? What were you thinking? Well, the old building is in an old neighborhood, and that to me is really valuable. It's a beautiful street to be on, and this building has a wonderful leaded glass bay window that was built by an Englishman back in the 1910s, and I fell in love with that. I like anything English, and it was just, just right for us, I think. 
Orange Tree Imports is on historic Old Monroe Street in Madison, part of Wisconsin's Main Street program. Alicia Gehring is director. That, um, it's a good place to do business because one, you, you can do things your way, you, you can be an independent business owner and you don't have to follow other people's uh, uh, rules that are sometimes in place in, in regular shopping malls and that sort of thing. Two, it's a, uh, there's always a spirit of camaraderie in these kinds of business districts so you can get involved more in the community and more and more business owners, small business owners particularly today are really wanting to give back to the community and it's, it's a way to do that. And third, uh, it is a, uh, a great place for small businesses that are unique to be unique and to sell that uniqueness. Well, there wasn't a merchants association when we opened 20 some years ago, so it was something I really felt a need for, to try and get people together to cooperate, to do events together, to do advertising together. I think that being in an old neighborhood, it's such an important part of our cities to, to keep these neighborhoods alive, and we just aren't really shopping center people. This is where we belong. Very early on, Orange and Dean decided their lifestyle is more important than big bucks. We've had many opportunities to expand, but we decided that it really made a difference for us to be here and to meet the customers, and also we decided to have children instead of branches. Their children have grown up in the store. We've always traveled together as a family on buying trips, and when it's inventory time, we're all here working, and uh, so it is part of our lifestyle, definitely. But I mean the idea that you can write your own schedule, uh, be your own boss, surround yourself with products and um, items that you like, don't you think that it's like it's bigger than a business? Do you know well, what I mean? I can't imagine life any other way. It, it really is, uh, it's part of how we picture ourselves I think and how we define ourselves. But I also realize that the store has a life outside of my life and Dean's life. I mean, it means a lot to different people. It means something special to my customers. It means something special to my staff. And I have to incorporate all those visions into what the business is. It's not just my uh, image of what Orange Tree Imports should be. Orange Schroeder is a team player. She hired employees immediately. And after only being in business one year, her husband joined her. Her employees are all critical to the decision-making process. She runs her business, she says, as a participative democracy. This means decisions are made by the team. Then outside her business, she's a team player. She started the Monroe Street Merchants Association. This means the shopkeepers are working together to bring shoppers into the area and to revitalize the entire business district. Orange is smart enough to know that you can't build a business by yourself and you certainly can't build an entire shopping area alone. Many of us are working ourselves into a frazzle because we're trying to do everything alone and we're not playing on a team because we haven't built a team. After 22 years, Orange isn't tired. She's ready to do another 22 years with Dean and her staff. If you're tired, frustrated, frazzled, stop doing everything alone and start building a team. The business community loves our show. One owner says, you're motivating, informative, and inspiring. Another calls us insightful. One says, it does my soul good. Another thinks we are the true reality show. And we're called the best business educational show on television. Want to learn more? Join the thousands of small business owners who are making a difference and add your voice to our story. Visit us online at smallbusinessschool.org. This is the Special Collector Club piece this year. Orange is constantly staging events to attract customers to the store. Here's Chris Jelilich, a vendor rep doing Christmas in July. He shows what collectors have to look forward to in the newest line of ornaments. So we wanted to give people a preview. Well, I think that it's really important as a specialty shop to keep the, a certain excitement alive. You want people to want to come into the store to feel that there's always something to see, something new. And one way to do that is to have special events. She was my very first appointment when I moved to Wisconsin. She works very well with vendors and also sales reps like myself, listening to what we have to say and what we see, what's moving, what's not moving. He's obviously much more knowledgeable about his specific line, which is Christopher Radko Ornaments, than I would ever be because he sells that line day in and day out. And he's willing to give up a couple hours of his time on a Saturday to come and show those samples to our customers and talk to them about them. And collectors especially love to talk to someone that really knows a lot about a line because they want the inside scoop. They want to know 
what the newest color of a certain ornament is or what's being retired. And that's something that we can offer them that a discounter can't. Orange mails invitations to the customers she knows already own ornaments from this manufacturer. Her success as a retailer depends on this type of targeted direct marketing. When, when you decide what to advertise, even though it might be very tempting to run an ad to get rid of the hundred um, souffle dishes you have in the back room, if souffle dishes aren't selling, you're wasting your time running an ad for souffle dishes. You need to run an ad for um, lemonade pitchers or whatever is hot at that time of year. Retail is detail. There are many, many details every day. and. Um, you have to keep your energy level up and keep excited about what you're doing in order to attend to all those details and make your store as successful as possible. Do you think having a business is for everyone? Well, I don't think it's for everyone under every life circumstance. Certainly there are many people that have the ability to have a business and have the intelligence and the drive to do it, but I think that not everyone's um, personal situation is right for owning their own business. Depending on their financial responsibilities, how many other people are involved in their family, what their energy level is, it's, it's not certainly right for everyone at every time. Okay. And I think it also is important that you like people and you may have a passion for stamp collecting and want to own a store selling collectible stamps, but if you don't also have a passion for dealing with the public or with your employees, that could be very difficult. So do you, so you think in retailing, loving people is number one? I think so. I think that uh, it's also, of course, a good idea to have a head for numbers and be able to make it work financially, but if you, if you don't like being with people and inviting people into your store as if you were inviting them into your home, then you probably shouldn't be in retail. Are you thinking about things that you want to do with your life in this second half? Well, that's a, a challenging thought. I, I think that I try and live every day as if I don't necessarily have half my life left to go. So I, I am involved in a lot of activities in addition to the store and try and live every day to the fullest. And I'd like to have Orange Tree Imports keep being an important part of, of that part of my life. And uh, I hope that Dean and I will have many years of running the store together and possibly have our son and daughter get involved in the future if they'd like to do that or possibly if they wanted to open a branch somewhere. But otherwise, I think Orange Tree Imports will stay with one location, continue to grow in other ways by diversifying, possibly exploring the internet, exploring mail order, um, new product lines, new ways of selling to our customers, and hopefully together with Monroe Street, bringing more customers to our area, which will not only help our fellow merchants, but also add to our success. And maybe have another 125 staff persons on your orange tree. <laughs>
If you're tired, frustrated, frazzled, stop doing everything alone and start building a team. We'll see you next time. Small Business School with Hattie Bryant. If you want to learn more about starting, running, and growing a business, come to our website, smallbusinessschool.org. There are streaming video and interactive study guides. The only way we can compete with big business is to be faster, smarter, and better. We are the engine of the American economy. We create the jobs. Small business is about big commitment. It's about sacrifice and struggle. But we do it because we say, if I don't do this, my life won't be complete.